I don't know. You're a little short for me, aren't you? <laughs> well, you're kind of old and got a big mouth. Come on. Yeah, I may be old, but I'm me. <laughs> Today, think oh. pruning is just for the dormant season? Well, think again. Tips for how to give your plants a summer cut. Plus, how to turn your problem area into a perfect paradise. And tools so powerful, they'll blow you away. Cool. Summer is just around the corner. So today, I'm going to bust out my pruning tools and trim a few trees. Oh, I know, I know. You've always been told that pruning is something that must be done only during the dormant season. But that's just not so. Fact is, you can prune during the growing season as well. And my first candidate is this Japanese maple. It's a healthy tree, but it does need some attention. The dieback on this branch, for example, is unsightly, so I'll cut it back to healthy wood. Ditto this branch, and this branch. This branch is fine, but it's hanging over the driveway, and it gets whacked every time somebody backs out. So I'll remove it, too. And this branch, which weeps nearly down to the ground, gets in the way of the mower, so I'll cut it back to the main trunk. Now, notice how I didn't cut this branch all the way back flush to the trunk. That's very important, because a flush cut won't heal properly. So make sure you leave, say, a quarter to a half inch of the cut branch still attached to the trunk. And by the way, it's called a branch collar, and it's a very important principle of pruning. Wait, what's this? It looks as though something has chewed the bark off these branches. And that something is a squirrel, or rather several squirrels, which, for reasons I don't fully understand, seem to love chewing on the bark of my Japanese maples. Now, if they were to chew all the way around the branch, thus cutting off its vascular system, the entire branch would die. But I've got a solution to the problem. <laughs> it's a slurry, or paste, if you will, of Cajun spices. Maybe on the cayenne pepper, please. Wow. And a bit of water, which I'll paint on the branches. And the next time the squirrels gnaw on the bark, they'll get a taste of my paste of peppers. <laughs> of course, if I've got Cajun squirrels in the area, this tree's in big trouble. On another Japanese maple, I'll also remove some dead wood, which, by the way, occurs naturally and doesn't necessarily indicate a health problem, as well as several branches that are hanging a bit too low and a few that are also in the path of cars. And by the way, this is the same tree that was crushed to the ground when my giant oak tree fell a couple of years ago. At the time, I thought it was a goner, but it's doing great. This situation is a bit different in that the branches I want to remove are a lot bigger. They belong to my prized hackberry, but they hang down so low that, again, it's difficult to mow under them. And because they cast so much shade, the grass didn't grow all that well beneath them anyway. But rather than remove the entire branch, which might weigh several hundred pounds in one cut, I'll simply start at the end of the branch and work my way back, cutting manageable sections along the way until I get to the point where the branch in question joins another branch, and there, I'll be sure to leave a branch collar. I'll do likewise with another branch or two or three, and when it's all said and done, I'll have opened up the area enough to where I should be able to get the grass to grow. And now it's time to focus on an evergreen or two. After all, they too can be pruned during the growing season. This blue spruce, called Chattanooga because it was first discovered near that beautiful Tennessee town, is doing just fine. It's got a nice overall shape and I think a pretty attractive crown. But because of the shade cast by surrounding plants, light has a tough time reaching the base of the tree. And as a result, it's thinned out considerably. You know, I have a similar problem, sort of. You see, I've thinned out on top, and sunlight has no trouble at all reaching my crown. Anyway, the solution here is to remove the lower limb, up to a point at which it appears the branches are getting plenty of light. This process, by the way, is called limbing up, and while there are times when it makes perfectly good sense to limb up a tree, there are exceptions. 
Magnolias, for example, shouldn't be limbed up because the lower branches hide the thick leathery leaves that fall. And realize that the lowermost branches of pin oaks, for example, will continue to weep no matter how high you limb up the tree. Another problem that's related to sunlight, or the lack thereof, is dieback on the shaded side of plants. And this tiger-tailed spruce is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. See all those unsightly, as in dead, branches? Well, they should be removed, not just because they're unsightly, but also because they can invite all sorts of insects that like to eat or lay eggs in dead wood. Even container plants may need a little pruning now and then, and this bamboo is a case in point. You see, the top growth got zapped by an 8-degree morning back in January, and it's never been the same since. But it's producing lots of new canes because the root ball is hardy to around minus 20 degrees. So I'll just remove the not-so-nice-looking canes. Remember, bamboo canes produce all their new growth in one relatively quick burst. In other words, they reach their ultimate height, whether 4 or 40 feet, in just a few days or weeks, and then they stop. And if you want them to get as tall as they genetically can, especially in a container, you'll need to thin out or prune all but three to five of the new canes so there's less competition. And that, friends and fellow gardeners, is Paul's primer on pruning during the growing season. And now I've got the worst part of all ahead of me, getting rid of all these prunings. <laughs> Can't stand this job. Coming up, I'll turn an eyesore into eye candy. Plus, garden gadgets that will help you edge out the competition. Sixty years ago, a soldier just back from the war moved into this house with his young family. Just about that time, a new store opened. A store with a commitment to keep prices low so returning GIs could afford the American dream. That store was Lowe's. There's a different family living here now, but Lowe's is still just down the street. And Lowe's is still committed to offering low prices, guaranteed. Every day, low prices. Lowe's, let's build something together. Cold sores? Take real action with Abriva. Only Abriva has the dual action of instant soothing and fast healing. Other products just soothe. Abriva soothes and then penetrates deep in the skin where cold sores start. To heal them fast. Think fast. Think Abriva. This message is brought to you by the letter A. As in Allstate, the first place to look for savings. Drivers who switched to Allstate saved an average of $396 a year. <laughs> awesome. This is humiliating. Stand still so you can get an accurate reading. Okay, um, 18 pounds and a smidge. A smidge? You know, there's really no need to weigh packages under 70 pounds. With priority mail flat rate boxes from the Postal Service, if it fits, it ships anywhere in the country for a low flat rate. Cool. You know, this scale is off a good seven, eight pounds. Maybe five. Priority mail flat rate boxes, only from the Postal Service. A simpler way to ship. Your health is your true wealth. Make a smart investment in your health with a VitaPak program only from GNC. Our customized VitaPak regimens give you essential vitamins and supplements with ingredients that support heart health, promote strong bones, and power up energy levels. Stop by GNC and find the VitaPak regimen that's right for you with the help of one of our in-store experts. It's a small investment with a huge healthy return. GNC VitaPak programs. Invest well. Live well. Today and into the future. Tonight, five families begin the ultimate challenge. Will their family room renovation become a living room or a living nightmare? HGTV's $250,000 challenge premieres tonight at 10, 9 central on HGTV. Every day gets something new at HGTV.com. Get before and after photos, fresh ideas and expert tips from our hottest designers, all updated daily. Make HGTV.com your first stop each morning. Clark has been living with this eyesore under his magnolia tree for 10 years, and he's finally had enough. Today, I'll see if I can turn this problem area into a pleasing point of interest. And the thing I'm most excited about, Clark, is the fact that we picked like a 97-degree day with 62% humidity to do this job. It'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought we'd tidy up first. This is such a common problem because when you've got nothing but bare dirt here, 
It rains, water comes off the roof, and then just splashes mud all over the place. I think you missed a spot. Now this soil, or dirt, <laughs> or whatever you want to call it, is, um, how should I put this, less than ideal. It's, uh, <laughs> it's basically just pulverized, it's like a fine powder. And that's just the result of, over the years and years and years, this magnolia with its fibrous root system sucking all the moisture and nutrients out of this to where you're left with something that's close to sterile, really. And even though Clark might be tempted to elevate the ground level by adding new topsoil, that's not a good idea. Doing so can actually suffocate the tree. So I have a simple solution that's good for both the ground and the tree. It's still going to be hard work, so my question to you is, how do you feel about heavy lifting? I can do it. Really? Yeah, I can. You know I'm what? old, but willing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Clark, this is called landscape fabric. It's a permeable material, so it allows moisture to seep through and also allows oxygen to reach the soil. The landscape fabric should keep the area weed-free for the next 10 to 15 years, and it's easy to install. Just roll it out over the area you want to cover and secure it with ground pegs. We could just leave it like this, you know? This beautiful black fabric all over the place. That would be nice. That would be a conversation starter. <laughs> Clark, we got really lucky, and this never happens at my place. But we had just enough of these ground pegs to uh, put all the fabric down. But were we to run out? You just take a little coat hanger, cut a section from it, put a nice little bend in it, like so, and you've made your own little peg. And you can just stab those right through the fabric and in to the soil it goes! <laughs> it's a good thing we're not trying to grow anything in here, you know that? One other little issue here. We got a little bare spot here. And I still need a little more fabric for some little project I want to complete on the other side. So we're going to substitute good old newspaper. Just several layers. It'll accomplish essentially the same thing. This will rot away a little quicker. But it'll still smother the weeds. And it gives a worm something to read. And now it's time for the secret ingredient. Uh, mulch. Mulch. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Clark, have you ever spread a bag of mulch? I've done a few, Paul. We could use a, a metal rake, you know, to do this, but I like to just get down on my hands and knees. And I like that tactile feeling I get from working with mulch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, let's hit it. Some people think that termites and other critters are imported in mulch, but that's horse hockey. The cedar mulch we're using here is actually an insect deterrent, and it smells really good, too. Clark, I gotta ask you a question. Why does the liriope there? That's a beautiful variegated liriope, by the way, but why does it stop so abruptly right there? Laziness. <laughs> you just that was it? That was it. You, I was tired, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's such an abrupt ending. What I wanna do is I got some more of the same stuff. And I wanna do just a nice soft radius and have it sort of disappear to that wall back there. And to do that, we'll need a couple of shovels, and we're going to dig a trench. Okay. You got a couple of shovels? Got two. All right, good. All Two's right. all we need. All right. We dig our trench a few inches wide, which gives us just enough room to fit the one-gallon liriopes in the trench. Now, Clark, we want to space these liriopes about a foot apart. And I didn't bring a ruler, but it just so happens that I wear a size 13 shoe, so that's <laughs> roughly, that's a foot apart. Liriope will grow almost anywhere. They tolerate shade and aren't too picky about soil type, which makes them a great choice for Clark's new bed. Yeah, I'm going to tighten these up just a little bit. Yeah. Maybe we could use your shoe because you're in 11. 11. Be sure to use caution if you decide to trim your liriope. Cutting too far down could seriously damage the crown of the plant, and it may not come back. Basic potting mix works as a great filler for our newly planted liriope. And now all that's left to do is fill in the space with some landscape fabric and spread out some more mulch. What do you think, Clark? Looks well, great, Paul. You said it was an eyesore before. Now how would you describe it? Uh, work of art. <laughs> well, that may be a bit of a reach, but I'll tell you what. We're not done. i got a few more bells and whistles just to kind of tweak things a little bit more. I can't wait. All right. 
I've chosen a rustic style bench for Clark's bed that will blend in nicely with the rest of the lawn. It's fairly easy to assemble and looks cool too. We'll add a few ferns and it's almost picture perfect. Almost. Looking pretty nice. Yeah, it's nice. Seems a little cooler in here too. Yeah, a little cozy spot to just sit. Watch the cars go by. Uh -huh. But you need a little the ace that is these homes. All right, what do you have in mind? Well, when I was over here earlier, you mentioned that your uh, bird feeder is actually a squirrel feeder. Correct. But I like it. Right. So I got one more little something to show you. I can't wait. You just stay right there. I'll go get it. Okay, Clark. Out with the old and in with the new. Look, it's a new squirrel proof bird feeder. Oh, that's great. Isn't that nice? Now it the is. birds can munch to their heart's content and the squirrels will have to go looking elsewhere. Sounds good. <laughs> what are you going to do with that? Uh, it's yours. Pretty Thanks. squirrely looking anyway. Thanks, Paul. In just one afternoon, we were able to turn Clark's eyesore into eye candy. Next, think your climate is too hot for colorful spring bulbs? We'll show you how to brighten up the neighborhood. Plus, cool tools that will help you take the edge off those backyard chores. Californians love green grass, and Heavenly Greens is the perfect landscape solution. Less than the cost of real grass without the maintenance. Now enjoy the look and feel of natural grass with Heavenly Greens. Specially engineered for years of enjoyment, Heavenly Greens is the beautiful solution. Our patented hybrid fiber is strong, smooth, soft, and resilient. Turn your home into a backyard dream. Call Heavenly Greens today and put your lawnmower away. Give your entertainment a boost with Stars from Comcast. For the everyday low price of $10 a month, you can watch tons of celebrated movies on Stars, like the animated adventure Wally, premiering May 18th. Wally! And the epic fantasy Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian, premiering May 2nd. <laughs> Plus, you can watch movies when you want, 24 hours a day, in stunning HD, and enjoy early premieres with Stars on Demand. It's all yours anytime for just $10 a month. So call and get stars today. Is your summer endless? Is it filled with lasting color and inspiration? You could travel the globe to find it or discover it in your own backyard with the Endless Summer Collection. Remarkable hydrangeas that bloom all summer long. Unique plants, unique blooms. Voila, unique garden. You don't need crazy gardening superpowers or an endless amount of time. All you need is endless summer. Look for the blue pots at a garden center near you. The hassles of wearing reading glasses because your contacts won't do. But you can expect more from your contacts. Bausch & Lomb multifocals were created with all-distance optics that seamlessly adjust your vision from reading to distance and everywhere in between. So you can see everything effortlessly and comfortably. And you can say goodbye, readers. For a free trial pair of Bausch & Lomb multifocal contacts, visit goodbyereaders.com and get rid of your readers today. With Minwax water-based wood stains, you can join the color revolution. With 74 dramatic colors, and use Minwax polycrylic protective finish for a crystal clear top coat. The results are revolutionary. Minwax makes and keeps wood beautiful. Now you can bring art to life with Crayola 3D chalk and glasses. It's colorful. It's washable. It's only from Crayola. Find the new outdoor airbrush and super bright sidewalk crayons in the Crayola aisle. Crayola, everything imaginable. If you live in the southern regions of this country, there's no need to wait for a light bulb to go off about what to plant for spring color. Get the most bang for your buck with bulbs. Rules were made to be broken, and that's especially true for gardeners in Texas. I mean, a garden this lush with bulbs is almost inconceivable. Most bulbs love 65 degree spring days preceded by a cold winter dormancy. But a Texas December day, or March for that matter, can reach 90 degrees plus, followed by 30 degree temperatures the next. Not exactly ideal for beautiful bulbs. 
The ideal environment for a bulb really is spring weather. They like lots of water, cool day temperatures, and cooler night temperatures. Uh, through winter, they want a long, cold season. So how do folks in places like the Deep South get around that whole long, cold season thing? Well, for starters, they change their thinking about the lifespan of a bulb. Here in Texas, they're annuals, which means planting rules fly right out the window. And tulips just don't perennialize in Texas. They really don't come back up every year. They don't flower more than once. So we literally put them touching, bulb to bulb. The whole point is to get as much color as quickly as possible. They say everything is bigger in Texas, and that includes the wow factor of displays like this. It may not last but about six to eight weeks in the spring, but for that six to eight weeks, every car that comes by is going to slow down in front of your house, or your neighbor is guaranteed to come knock on your door and go, how do you do that? One of the ways Jimmy does that is by using a mixture of bulbs that'll give him the most bang for his buck. Tulips, number one. That's the first thing everybody thinks of when you say bulb. Daffodils, which are also narcissus and jonquils, are all the same thing, just different shaped flowers. And then hyacinths. Mixing and matching these major bulbs in each of your planting beds is a great way to keep the space in your face. The reason why is on tulips, there's an early, a mid, and a late group of tulips. The daffodils and hyacinths bloom early, so you put them on the bed, you can extend your bloom season, and I stack them in run, right on top of the other. Of course, with just one season for pleasing, Jimmy wants the healthiest bulbs he can get. Steer clear of light, flaky, or moldy bulbs. Instead, choose heavy ones with a nice, tight skin. The heavier the bulb is, the more flowers in there. Next is planting. And as you can probably guess, Jimmy has chucked the rules once again. The old standard rule for planting bulbs, especially on spacing and planting, is to space them five to six inches apart and plant each bulb individually. Well, first of all, that takes a lot of time. It doesn't get a whole lot of bulbs in one area, and it's all about the wow, the show. Even in Texas, spring bulbs are planted between Thanksgiving and Christmas. The rule of thumb is that the holes should be twice as deep as the bulb is high. And believe it or not, Jimmy's going to follow that one. Spacing, however, is another story. Now, how do you space them in the hole? You dug the hole, how do I put them in there? This is the easy part. You can help the bulbs out by pointing the sprout end up and by all means, tuck them in there nice and tight. Remember, they're annuals here at the Arboretum. Might as well make the brief showcase a bountiful one. After you do that, just dump the soil back in there and we're done. You can do the same thing for things like snowdrops, irises, and anemones. One of Jimmy's favorites is this anemone coronera one of the rare true blue blooms you'll find among anemones. The foliage will last all winter long. It's kind of green like parsley. And then starting about March, they start to flower. And the great thing about this bulb is one little bulb will put out 10 or 15 flowers. Instead of just one like a tulip or two or three like a daffodil, you get a lot of flower for the bulb in this one, and they're really inexpensive. There are plenty of companion plants you can use to fill in the planting bed until the bulbs rear their gorgeous blooms. The whole thing about the color wheel and using colors and trying to figure out which goes with what, just throw it out. Apparently in Texas, the only rule in the garden book is to keep a cool garden look. All colors go together. It's your yard. Do what you want to, and if you like it, it works. It's just like art. If you've got the guts to call it art, it is. And to prove that guts and gardening go hand in hand, here's another way to bravely put spring color in your yard, especially when the weather isn't very cooperative. Bulbs and containers. You can grow bulbs anywhere in the world if you grow them in containers. It's a great way to use bulbs. Instead of just new landscape, use them as spot color in pots. On top of a hefty layer of soil, pour the bulbs in, turn the tips upright if so desired, and get ready for a cover of color. Once you have the bulbs in the containers, you can start adding bedding plants on top of them. Add whatever you like. Annuals like pansies and snapdragons will look great, as will perennials like this carex. It looks like it's dead. But think of it like a dried flower arrangement inside your house or decorating your interior. It's really decorating here, it's not gardening. If you want a bulb bonanza early, grow a few beforehand. Had a few bulbs left over in the refrigerator, didn't know what to do with them, didn't have a spot to put them in the landscape. Well, guess what? Put them in a black plastic pot. The next spring, you've got a pot or a container that doesn't look that great. Instant spring. 
Now, as the bulbs grow, they'll just push the plants on top out of the way in order to bloom. So no matter where you live, bulbs are a stunning way to usher in springtime, even if you have to break a few rules along the way. By the way, if you store your bulbs in the crisper section of the refrigerator, make sure you take the fruit out first. Apples in particular emit ethylene gas, and that can damage your bulbs. Up next, the useful garden gear to help you keep your lawn trimmed and tidy. Plus, how to give your plants all the individual attention they deserve. Renters are different from home buyers. I definitely see the rec room as a band room. This is a big step up from a tent. Still living out of my suitcase. For Rent, all new episode tonight at 1110 Central on HGTV. Wouldn't it be great if it were easy to spot the good guys? You know, the guys who do a super job. Introducing the Super Guarantee. Go to superpages.com to find a business with a super guarantee. We're so confident in these super businesses, we stand behind their services. You'll get the job done right, or we'll make it right. Sign up for free at superpages.com. The new Super Guarantee. Making the good guys easy to find. How's practice? Coach said I was a leader. You are. That's what they look for in the military. That is idea. No, mine. I like being part of a team and the physical challenge. I think I'd be good at it. It would be. But I've got some questions. I think someone else might, too. Mom. Get home early. garden centers and the Home Depot. Big thrill. Small bill. We just made paradise more affordable. Come to Puerto Rico. Get up to $500 in instant credit, spending money, an additional night free, and more. Make plans for Puerto Rico today. You just can't afford to let this thrill pass you by. Book it today with your favorite travel partner or visit go to PuertoRico.com. Puerto Rico, explore beyond the shore. If you purchased Bextra and or Celebrex on or before July 29, 2005, you could get money back from a class action settlement fund. The lawsuit claims that consumers paid more for Bextra and or Celebrex than for comparable pain relievers. Call 1-800-547-9360. That's 1-800-547-9360. Or visit BextraCelebrexSettlement.com for information on your legal rights and filing a claim. One of the surest ways to dress up a landscape is with edging materials, which not only create crisp, clean borders, but also serve a very valuable function. They prevent grass from growing into adjacent beds. A few of the more popular edging materials include stone, steel, wood, and fiberglass. But tools like this take edging to the next level. This particular tool is made of a special resin mix, which after a few minutes in the sun is plenty flexible to work with. All you do is dig a four inch deep trench to establish the area to be edged, lay the edging in the trench, and firm the soil. Simple enough, right? Well, hang on because there's more to this stuff than meets the eye. I'm now going to hook my hose up to one end of the edging, put an end cap at the other end, install several emitters along the length of the edging, and look, it's a combination edging material and irrigation system. The emitters or nozzles can be adjusted two ways. One knob controls water volume and distance up to five feet, while the other allows you to aim the water where it's needed most. Oh, by the way, the tool I use to install the edging is perfectly designed to do just that. And if you'd like to learn more about it, just click on HGTV.com. Well, since I'm on the subject of edging, check out this new gadget. It's a string trimmer, but one with a feature unlike any other I've ever seen. You see, this particular model is a string trimmer and a blower. So after you've finished trimming the edge of your edging, you simply flip this handle and the trimmer becomes a blower. 
So there you have it, an excellent tool for edging, a multi-purpose edging material, and a gadget that'll help keep your edges crisp and clean. I just love gardening on the edge.